Hi, I'm Evan. And this question is worded so simply, but it's such a complex question. I love it. Just had to answer it. This question is, which elements have similar properties? And I've uploaded a periodic table image to this whiteboard to help answer that question. So the periodic table is called periodic for a reason. It's that when chemists, when the field of chemistry was first being created, chemists noticed that certain substances behaved in predictable manners as their weight went up. And they called this behavior periodic because you'd have this period of like, you know, you know, something reacts a lot, something doesn't really react, and then it reacts a lot in a different way. And they saw this cycle repeating. They called those cycles periods. And so you read the periodic table, you know, left to right, top to bottom, like a book. So the elements get heavier left to right and then top to bottom. So like hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, so on. And the reason the rows are arranged like they are, the reason that lithium is below hydrogen and silicon is below carbon, that's because those elements have similar properties and chemists notice this. And so they arrange them in the same column, despite them being, you know, some arbitrary amount of mass heavier than the, uh, than the elements above or below them. And so the periodic table kind of tells you, especially for um, columns one, two, and then 13 through 18. The, these are the transition metals. They behave a little different. Transition metals. But especially for, in this case, columns one, two, uh, 13 through 18 on my picture. Um, columns really give you a good idea of which elements have similar properties. And the reason for that, let me just move this image real quick. The reason for that is something called valence electrons. There. I'm going to write that out. Valence electrons. It's a very important set of words. Valence electrons. Now, valence electrons, that's just a fancy way of saying electrons on the outside of an atom. Electrons on the outside of an atom. And why do we care about electrons on the outside of an atom? Aren't all electrons on the outside of an atom? Well, not quite. The way an atom is arranged, and I'm going to try and draw this as well as I can. It's going to be a bit of a simplistic drawing. So in here you have the nucleus. This is the nucleus. I'm going to color code this. And then the electrons are arranged in what's called orbitals. So you might have an orbital in here. Let's call this an orbital. Let's call it orbital number one. I'm not going to get into orbital terminology right now. Let's call this orbital number two. And each orbital, there can be more than two orbitals, there can be fewer than two. Um, each orbital might have a few electrons. Let's draw two orbitals in orbital number two, or two electrons, excuse me, two electrons in orbital number two, and two electrons in orbital number one. When another molecule or atom interacts with this atom here, it's going to see orbital number two. Orbital number one is effectively shielded by orbital number two. So orbital number two is kind of on the outside of the atom. And this is what is known as valence electrons, electrons that are on the outer kind of orbiting set around an atom. And since these are electrons are going to be the first thing that other things bump into when they're interacting with the atom, they kind of dictate how the atom reacts and how it behaves and how it looks. And so this is kind of the fundamental theory behind why certain elements behave in similar ways.